two, one. So good evening and welcome everybody to a very, very special and unique uh, event today, ANP Mindspace. Uh, I was exposed to this Mindspace for last one and a half, two years when I started reading about this in our NAIR alumni group, as well as on Instagram. And I saw that there's something really, really special that is happening there. And uh, that is what this entire event is about that we're going to explore together uh, today. The terms of reference are very, 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 very open-ended and straightforward. So we are going to go through the concept of mind space. It will involve mostly philosophical uh, discussions, certain insights, question and answer that will bring out more out of out of ANP mind space that I believe I hope so. And uh, together we'll learn something of value and something, some real, real great insights. So let's not waste much time. I'll start with introducing our guest today. So I have a short presentation and I'll take you through it. So Professor Dr. Asim Parekh or ANP as we all lovingly call, call him, uh, he is an Emirate Professor of Orthopedic Surgery at uh, TNMC. He was Professor and Head of Department of Orthopedic Surgery for 28 long years at TNMC and has worked in KEM and I believe even at Sion Hospital for some time, sir? Uh, six months. Yes. Few glimpses from Nair journey. He has always been involved with the entire department, whether it is at his office or in the wards. He loves to teach both postgraduates as well as undergraduates, and his involvement is immense. Looking at the convocation ceremony, not only with the students, but also with seniors. He is a man of all seasons, always smiling, and always being involved in everything that is in front of him wholeheartedly. That is what I have noticed all the time. He has been a pillar for the entire department, a strong, strong wall. Not only the department, the residents, but also the staff. The primus, like we say, the primus inter Paris. And he was the president of Bombay Orthopedic Society 2016-2017. Like I said, Mindspace ANP is a very, very special thing. And... I think this has been talked about even in this very, very special auditorium of Jeevraj Mehta at uh, KM Hospital. We are going to explore more in depth and hear from Sir himself. But what I've learned is he has developed, he always has this uh, fondness for the language and communicated so well with us, even in our residency days. But I think now we have started putting those conversations to paper. And that is what is forming the major part of Mindspace. Not only Mindspace, he has developed this rose wall, the scent of life in the orthopedic department, where all these musings and insights are put up over the years. I am unfortunate that it wasn't there in my time, but uh, I think today's events, I'll be exposed to all of these especially this part of the truth teller is always under oath. And this affected me so much that it's, it's a real great insight. And, and I'm looking for a lot of these today in our discussion. So we are ready to discuss and we both are under oath. If anyone has any questions, they can WhatsApp me directly. This is my, my WhatsApp number and most of the orthopedic surgeons will have my number. So you can just send your questions to me and we'll post them up here for discussion. So let's begin with uh, uh, Mindspace with Professor Dr. Asim Parikh. So I welcome you, sir. Uh, thanks very much for accepting this invitation from on my behalf and from behalf of Ortho TV Global. Thanks very much, sir. Thank you, Ashok. So let's I begin. I am grateful to you 
for providing also TV uh, as a platform to reach out to very many more people than I can usually at a single time. Thanks, sir. So let's begin with some Q&A in the beginning. So can you elaborate on what is the concept of ANP Mindspace? I give you a bit of long form. Yes, sir. Tell me not in mournful numbers, life is but an empty dream. For the soul is dead that slumbers and things are never what they seem. The question is, do you dare? Do you dare to go behind what seems to be? Do you care to explore? Do you care to look beyond? Do you dare and do you care? Do you dare with what is required and do you care enough about yourself? Do you care about your growth? Do you care about realizing your potential? If you do, life is real. Life is earnest. And the grave is not its goal. Dust thou art to dust returns was not spoken of the soul. It is the soul, especially to those of us in time who are steeped in the tradition and culture of this great country, the one thing which is indivisible, the one thing which is a gift, the one thing you cannot take, you cannot give away. The soul is eternal and this is long fellow. Lives of great men all remind us we can make our lives sublime. And departing, leave behind us footprints in the sands of time. The concept, as you say, Ashok, about uh, mind space came out of a need for me. And I hope to be able to dilate on this a little later in the program. A need for me is not necessarily selfishness. You would be familiar with Ayn Rand, the writer, and her concept of enlightened self-interest we are we selfishness. A selfish act is one which an individual commits, which is not entirely legitimate towards achieving one's goal. An act of self-interest would tweak that act so that nobody else suffers. And that is the root of all kindness. So. I had this need within me that would not let me rest. Having gained what I had gained, having learned what I had learned, I realized, realized in a very real way that without giving it back many fold, my entire life has been meaningless apart from the lives I have immediately touched. I am human. There is a circle of influence that I have, which is of necessity finite. And there is a circle of concern which I have, which is infinite. These two cannot overlap fully in a mortal's existence. So to go beyond was to give away what I've gained to so many other people who are willing and who are able to carry the teachings which have been reposed in me that much further. And once I started, the realization, the experience was I was seeing my living legacy. I see it in you, Ashok. I see it in everyone who have, I have been fortunate to spend time with and who have done me a service by taking away from me. For my, my giving, I have become the greater. 
not greater in an egocentric, megalomanic way, but greater as in I have that much more to give. And growth. Greatness is a function of growth. I hope to be able to dilate on this as well a little later. True greatness is with absolution, yet that is some distance away for very many of us. So having realized that I require a vehicle, my body is a vehicle, my occupation is a vehicle, and teaching is my vocation, it is still a vehicle. The moment I let my head swell with an accolade is one step forward, two steps back in the simplest of language. Having realized that mind space is necessary for my living, for my building, for my giving my Raza the Atra, which is to teach, indeed my vocation, I required a content for mind space. And the content could only be that which other people could relate to. Unless you relate to me as an individual, unless I am able to make you relate to what I am speaking, all communication that takes place in a relationship is a waste of time. So there is so much by way of information, so much even by way of knowledge. I needed to choose collect, collate, and present it in a way that would at least be considered, and which has been ANP right through. ANP never asks anybody to believe what he says. Right from my earliest days as assistant professor, registrar at the KEM hospital. You please listen to me this once. Take it with you on your own time. Think about it. Think about it means you apply your own reason and logic to it. And if it makes sense to you, utilize it in some small way and check out the result. If it works for you, gamble a little more. For my question still remains at the end of Longfellow's first stanza. Do you dare? Do you dare? And are you worth it? The content for a person whose vocation is teaching, I say now as emeritus professor, I teach life. And I realize life is all I've been teaching for the last 30 years. Orthopedics has been a medium. Why? Because others, the people I was fortunate to teach, accepted orthopedics as the medium in which they could take from me, grasp, because they had a self-interest, qualifying as orthopedic surgeons. Clearly, they're very good at orthopedic surgeons. And yet, oh, this sounds a bit boastful, and yet, and yet, all these human beings are not better, not worse. There is no better or worse in reality. There only is. All these people are different from the mass. They don't have to be noisy. They are all leaders. In their own space, in their own universe, in their own construct, with their content, they are fantastic. These are the winners. These are the winners in their own lives right here. And I am 62 today. These guys have got decades to go. The people I'm training at the, at the Nair Hospital now, they, they are uh, three and a half decades my junior. My undergraduates are four decades my junior. I'm not jealous of them, but I envy them, their youth, their energy, and all that glorious time which is available to them. But I don't feel bad. And I don't grudge them. For at one time, I had all that glorious time. And I was motivated enough to do something. So what is the context? The concept of mind space, the content of mind space, my subject and yours. As in orthopedics, so in life. Life is the subject for everyone. 
the creation of mind space. A blanket mind space for everybody from undergraduate to intern to postgraduate, to my peer group, to my senior colleagues. No work. <clears throat> the reason is people are always more attracted by glister than my goal. And I have always maintained that you got to do what you got to do till you get to do what you want to do. So, no trickery. A truth teller is always under oath. So, stymied me and encouraged me at the beginning of this little chat we are having. Uh, what attracts you to me? Let's speak orthopedic private practice. How do you make that patient your own? That patient has landed up with you, either primum or second opinion, third opinion, relative has referred, friends has referred, wife, family has referred, which is the worst. Now, how do you grab that patient by the ball, eyeballs and hang on? So that you give yourself that one opportunity to work your magic. And having worked your magic, that patient is yours. And my seniors told me, I tell my juniors, and I tell you today, your satisfied patients are your best advertisement. We do not advertise. We belong to a noble profession. We are making it ignoble by advertising uh, uh, going around the laws and so on. We have become like, we have become like, very well, people in cages, taxis in the cabaret. And to create mind space on a sustainable basis was the biggest challenge. For, as I have always maintained, Every evening or night, I retire for the day, having learned one more new thing in orthopedics. New means that which I did not know up to now. There is nothing new in the world. You just have to find it. The question is, do you dare? And one non-orthopedic thing. And I realized, as an orthopedic, so am I. And then there is an endless journey. When I tell you, take it away, apply reason and logic to it, think. And if it doesn't work, come back and tell ANP, you talk rubbish. So far as nobody has got that. I'm waiting for that one day. For then, I will cease and desist from doing all of this. And the connect of mind space, which I hold, which I hold dear, and I hold being under oath and truthful, or required to tell the truth at all times. I hold to be sacred, and that is the connect mind space between the humans, where I do not enter a relationship, and I do not, I do not uh, uh, carry forward communications with any kind of artifice, or telling lies, and the connect. Every communication is complete in itself. There are no hangovers. Every closure is final in itself. It's gone. The new day is here, untouched. Let us enjoy it together. So that was the creation of mind space, the connect that is mind space, and everything that goes on in between. Ashok. I would absolutely connect with that. Whether you can, do you dare it, and are you worth it? And these are two very, very important insights that I gather. And I think many of us are held back because of these two very, not, not, not realization, we realize it many a times, but we don't act upon it or we don't see it being underlined many times. We don't see it being reinforced by, um, by people in people whom we look up to, maybe, many a times. So I'm so glad that you have been 
being enforcing these two points, which are really, really very important. And really, I mean, they, they establish the basis of mind space. That this is what we aim for you to change or to realize or to act upon. So thanks sir, for that insight. And I think the next question was about evolution of, of mind space and you already covered it. My third question is about what do you feel will be the impact of mind space? I'm not talking about in terms of volume, but in terms of not quantity, but quality on people who are listening or people who are being exposed to this. Right. <clears throat> First of all, uh, minor correction, Ashun. I do not enforce anything on everybody. I have not enforced this or ever enforced anything on anyone. It is just something I keep stressing and stressing and stressing because in the culture which I grew up, and perhaps definitely Ashok, in the culture you grew up, learning by rote was very important. And although the so-called education systems of today uh, wish to do, like to do things in a different way, to learn things by rote is very important for training the mind. And the trained mind is the basis of all moving and shaking in life. So no enforcement. Here it is. If you like to take it, please take it. If you don't like to take it, Give it a thought, I'm still here tomorrow. But my tomorrows are finite. And where do I see it going? Ashok, I don't see it going anywhere. I am seeing it going here. See it going is I am not a fortune teller. Very well. I, I, I confess to you, I have second sight. I developed it. I can look into the future. I can see so clearly. Where which resident registrar, I still call them registrars, the chaps who train directly with me, where they are going to land up. I can see where they are going to be 25, 30 years down the line. And yet I don't tell them. Until they are qualified and they are going away from the same physical place. And they do me the honor of asking me, sir, we want your advice. That time I tell them. See, 25 years from now, Whatever you do, you're going to be there. Just fill the time in between with joy. Whatever pleases you. You're going to land up there. This is not destiny. This is not fatalism. This is, well, this is karma. And unless you train your mind to be a mover and a shaker, to be a prime mover, to have what it takes, the courage, to drop your inhibitions and go ahead, everything will happen, but your life will be devoid of experience. So mind space will go where it wants. It is not for you and me to see where it goes. We enjoy ourselves today, as you as you so put, you put it so well in the beginning. We are going to explore together. We are going to explore together. This Ashok is not about you. It is not about me. It is not about whoever is watching. Let us say some people are watching. Even if nobody is watching, this is a wonderful evening I'm sharing. With you. Because now I do not want. I have my needs. They are, they are limited. And there are people in my life with whom I can spend time happily. And who do not cater to my need, but they provide whatever few needs I have. And why am I in space? Why all this? Why teaching? It's a philosophy. It's nothing to do with religion. What is the one thing everybody wants the most? Or anything else? What is the one thing which everybody wants the most? Irrespective of anything else, what is that one thing which everybody wants on a continuing basis? Yes, I want a single malt, but that's only for today. I want dark chocolate, that's only for today. I want shahi tukra, that's only for today. 
what is it that everyone wants on a continuing basis what everyone wants on a continuing basis morning to evening day to night night to day and so on is to make a difference in the world that's the one thing everybody wants don't kid yourself that's what you want. anybody who is listening and looking at today that is what you want whether to make a difference for the good or the bad is not even a moot point because in the universe i inhabit secret and that you also inhabit there is no good or there is no bad shakespeare settled that in hamlet long ago there is nothing good or bad it is thinking which makes them so so what is good what is bad it is your perception sun will rise sun will set rain will fall it doesn't care you want to make a difference you make a difference like hitler like stalin like mussolini like pol pot like that chap in korea eh uh, short chubby fellow and you make a difference like mohandas karamchand gandhi like mother teresa scores of examples in this very own our great country and everywhere if these people albert schweitzer these guys were not there and they didn't live their lives if they didn't dare if they didn't share their religious you know about gandhi when he came back here it is said <clears throat> he said when he went to argue a case in the court of small small causes opposite the zavier school uh, he nearly collapsed mother teresa had her own inhibitions albert schweitzer had to go into the jungles to express it. the point here if there is a point is each of them dared they dared because they wanted to make a difference and they it's not about soul it's not about mind their self their very self but not let them be mandela they lock up the man for so many years and he comes out in victus how many role models they're all over the place you want a role model you don't read a role model look in the mirror back to that later you are your own role model you have what it takes the question is do you dare that's the question of the you it will happen at a point in your life part of mind space is to make you aware that the earlier it happens for you the more enlightened years you have so what's the one thing everybody needs 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 i need air again okay, i might want single malt dark chocolate or rasgulla rasgulla chom chom whatever what is that one thing everyone needs? initially the one thing which everyone needs is acknowledgement not validation just acknowledgement beyond that what is the one thing everybody needs appreciation so whenever you see something which is worthwhile that somebody has put time energy themselves into acknowledge it appreciate it and then if you have it in you make it still better and if you can't or you can't appreciate it just leave well alone and carry on that person dared you are still carrying on blind and although you seem to be moving you are still lame and ashok what are the three important words that anybody would like to hear or is dying to hear on again on a constant basis yes the answer i usually get for this is i love you it is not i love you she loves you tonight tomorrow morning she will say i don't love you she won't over or she won't at some stage in your relationship she will stop saying i love you 15 times every minute yes once every 4 seconds the three most important words gentlemen ladies if there any there i'm sorry which every human being craves to hear at a certain stage having been accomplished acknowledged appreciated or i need you 
because the day anybody says i need you they cannot get by without you in the way that they like and they trust you sufficiently that they are shedding their inhibitions they are moving outside of themselves it takes a lot of courage to ask for favor ladies and gentlemen you would all have experienced it there are no big favors small favors because a favor has to do with questioning your self respect so to get out of there and say i need you doctor that is what you have been i don't know about born or created that is what you are trained to do so when that third party about whom you know nothing verbally or non verbally acknowledges that she or he needs you your your existence is validated enlightened and enlightened whether you see in the light whether you end up when another human being says i need you uh, what is it that they say amitabh ji zindagi ka life tumhara ban gaya yes and then there is the wealth and show your your own world view and your own philosophy ashok absolutely sir so uh, i was saying the enforcement was not on us uh it, it is enforcement to their own selves we like you said role models are people who have enforce whether to dare it and whether they are worth it those are people that are lacking and those are people like lacking within our close influences that's what i was uh, hinting at not not people enforcing on us but I people enforcing on themselves yeah so i think we have uh, reached to a point where we are eager now to hear the exposition of anp mind space in detail and directly from you to listen the entire concept and the entire uh i'm not going to theory but it is more of a practical part of it and so the stage is all yours sir. yeah so uh what do we call it knife in hand okay i got this so mind space begins and makes its journey in the transition from thinking to knowing in the transition from thinking to knowing But that is not a change it is a transition nothing changes many years ago all of us who did orthopedics were certainly told this by someone that nothing changes we have to change it whether we did orthopedics or not change is the only constant everything else and yet for human beings nothing changes in a human being nothing changes which is why i say the journey the transformation the enlightenment it's all about movement if you tell me life is movement movement is life yes because if there is no movement there is no breath there is death so when there is no life uh that particular shift a transformation because thinking is done with the mind you asked about mind space yes uh the practical yes so thinking is to do with the mind now you can't see a mind you can't touch a mind you can't uh, you can't do anything with a mind except use it or uh, abuse yourself with chemicals and abuse it now the smart thing to do is to use your mind. even a even a, a very basic study of the basic is not a word i use very often uh, please appreciate the context in which i am using this adjective even a basic or a rudiment a rudimentary study of the brain will tell you that the mind 
is a function of the brain. And the mind will function like any other machine or apparatus depending on its talim, depending on its exercise, depending on its programming nowadays more so. And there is the secret to understanding the mind, practical. See, to the mind, the mind, by training the mind, what we do now is we program our minds to suit our purpose. What are our purposes? To get what we would like. Like is a very nebulous idea. Even so, most of the time, the better trained the mind is, the faster is the processing of fresh stimuli and generation of appropriate response. Now the huge thing about fitting in is being appropriate. I said a few minutes ago, you have to do what you have to do till you get to do what you want to do. So even today, I don't go to NAR in my underpants. So being appropriate is what is fitting to that particular uh, moment, episode, event. Now, to be appropriate as quickly as possible is to say, I love you to her at the college social before anybody else does. Otherwise, she's spoken to. So, to train your mind, let's go back to learning by rote. Learning by rote is the mind in motion. Learning by rote, there is no control. After some time, the mind takes over and you are not thinking your thoughts, but your thoughts are thinking you. This is very elementary. This is very elementary. Your mind will, you will listen, you will not hear. Hearing takes place with vibration of the tongue. Listening takes place, you got it. You will see, you will not just look. Amateurs look, we see. And if you must see, see right at once. I tell everybody about the x-ray. If you have to study an x-ray, you're doing something inefficient. Whatever is pathologic on the X-ray should jump out of that film and sear your retina. What happens at the retina? There's an optic nerve. You will see what happens goes to the mind at some stage. And there is a connect synapse, which is happening from whatever you've already collected, collated, compiled in your mind. Elaborate saving system, data system. And the moment it clicks, you know that is osteogenic sarcoma. Yeah? And now confirm it. So efficiency of the mind, like efficiency of any machine is something which is at the command of your self. So there is self, there is mind, there is soul. I'll leave the soul out of this. So there is self. Your mind is a machine for which everything is the same as everything else, but not always. Because this image, sunburst, cardamans, metaphysial, young patient, osteosarcoma, everything is the same as everything else, but not always. So once you start training the mind, you learn to identify the not always, practical. Once you are able to identify the not always, you become the superior person. You don't call yourself superior. There's not about ego, not egomania, megalomania, boasting, false pride, nothing. The fact is you get it before anybody else. That makes you the smartest person in the room. People will call you the smartest person. Other people will label you superior because they are 
still stuck in comparing. Practical. Do not compare yourself with anybody. You are emperor in your mind space. You are emperor in the universe which you have created. Just learn one new orthopedic thing every day, one non-orthopedic thing every day. Otherwise, do not sleep. That is all you require to be different. Not in a good way, not in a bad way. In the way you choose to be. You want to grow. You want to make a difference. Why should anybody listen to you? Why should they agree to your kind of difference? This is why you got to do what you got to do till you get to do what you want to do. People are smart. Some people take a little more time to figure out. That's all. When they figure out, if they figure out late, they're going to hate you more than the guys who figured out. The guys practical. The guys who figured out always say, okay, smart guy, keep an eye on him. That's all. Be careful of him if you're doing palace politics. Yeah, that's all. The guy who finds out the late, the dabu, he is the person to take care of. He is the guy who, like Brutus, will come and if you, because just then they said, no, Brutus was an honorable man. Yes, they were all, all honorable men. So, you are the only person who is responsible for your sanity, for your security. And until you live in sanity, you cannot provide it for others. Until you are secure, you cannot provide security to others. Unless you are strong, you cannot protect others. Unless you are away and far from the medical crowd, you can never make that one difference. And it, 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 it doesn't really matter. It doesn't really matter. They give you Longfellow again, last stanza. And departing, leave behind us footprints in the sand of death. Do not worry. Like that, Tisri Kasam movie. Sanam ye jhoot mat bolo, khuda ke paas jana hai, na haathi hai, na ghoda hai, waha paidal hi jana hai, sajan ye jhoot mat bolo. Everyone has heard this song, everybody has hummed this song. It's very simple Hindustani, everyone understands this song. And that is the booby prize. Understanding is the booby prize, gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen. The moment you set out to understand something, your mind will play tricks on you. It will all be accepted by the society in which you live. Society is interested in you because they want to make a lemming out of you. The day you say no, they will try to stomp you out, make yourself strong if for no other reason, to be able to stand up for what you believe in and the only thing you can believe in is that which you have experienced not understood understanding ladies and gentlemen is a total wholesale case right? what is there to understand fine what will you do with the understanding we have a good answer please whatsapp that to dr ashoksha what is there experience is everything you understand the female orgasm you understand the male orgasm. What difference does it make? Oh, you understood it. You've read the books. Unless you experience it, all that for you, it is not the truth. And the truth teller is always under one. So, truth comes from your own experience. Mind space is not mine alone. It is mine. That is why it goes with Mind space A and P. Anyone is welcome to come in and frolic by all means. My rules. One rule. No telling lies. Simple. Life is simple. Human beings, stupid people, they complicate. Life is simple. Mm -hmm. Nobody, you can frolic in A and P. A and P can't give you. The space is one thing which you have to create for yourself. You, you, you cannot inherit it from your parents. You cannot buy it uh, in the market or from the real estate guy. You, you, you cannot even loot it from an individual. 
You cannot. He will give up his life first. He will give up his life first. Then where are you? You got dead meat. You are no wiser. And you've accumulated karma because you have indulged in selfish action at the cost of somebody else's life. Think about it. And when we frolic together here today, and when you leave my mind space here today, you must. You must. I've not invited you to spend the night with me. And you must. Which space will you retire into? How much of this will you carry with you? Whatever charge you are able to get when we are together. I feel you guys. I cannot see anybody on the screen in front of me. I can see large image of me, pocket image of me. Whoever you. I am aware that something is happening in this space here. I know it is cyberspace. I know there are all kinds of complicated thingies about it. Ah, but I've got a shock to look after. And all I'm doing is being myself. The question is, some stage, we are not together anymore. Today, where will you go? Will you, will you, will you crawl into a hole? Will you stick your head into the sand? A lot of so-called smart people are hostages. If it works for them, it works. Whatever fits there is sense. Everything else, nonsense. I think, therefore I am. Discard this. I can because I think I can. First one is okay. Second one, I can because I think I can. There is a little gap here which has to be filled. Thinking in itself is not enough. Thinking is enough for understanding. You need to move. There has to be a dynamism within you. You have to, you have to, if you can force your heart and nerve and sin you to serve your time long after they are gone. Bit of Kipling there. So if it if it refuses to work, start by saying, This is mine, I will it. So willpower is a very real thing. The the, the strongest sense of being, doing is the will. And the will is not a function of the mind, is a lazy bugger. It's, it's oh no, no, not bugger, mind is gender neutral. Mind is lazy. It is the self which takes the decision separately from the soul, nothing to do with the mind, and all enthusiasm does not show. Because to be enthusiastic is to be filled with God. Excitement is on show. Sometimes, many a time, enthusiasm is coupled with excitement. So it's on show. There is ebullience. Yeah. But what about all those wonderful ideas which all of us get at 2 o'clock in the morning when the world is asleep? What about those? All of us don't go shouting Eureka without our clothes all over the place. But yet, that is when. In silence, you will dream in silence. You will go beyond thought. And you will experience experience without all the inputs and the thrills of understanding. Not that I say do not read the journals and the case. Read every single one of them. Do not get attached to it. Life is not about attachment. Life is about moksha. It is all about detachment. Between full attachment via an umbilical cord to total detachment, absolution and adoration of the Lord. Who, whoever he or she you consider. I said, this is not about religion. This is about a philosophy. That movement which takes place that shift which takes place, that journey which takes place is the story of your life. And this, ladies and gentlemen, 
I put to you happens in mind space. There would be other ways where this could happen. For me, mind space worked, works at the moment because we have only the moment. I see no reason for it to not work, which is why not only do I introduce it, not only do I exposition to expose, to dilate, I, it is something I have, which to me is of value, and I wish to share it with human beings, for I love human beings. If you have a problem with that, send a message to Ashok. Yes, Ashok. I think that was really comprehensive theology that we have put up, and I think most of us will have to come back listen to it again at least two or three times to grasp at least 50% of what you're saying. Because I think it's, it's, a, it's not a transition. It's like a shock many times to hear something like this. Like I said, we in our orthopedic careers have very few or absolutely no role models in terms of this kind of talk to us. I mean, so if a role model to us in orthopedics talks to us on these points, not only it is very, very, I mean, we accept it very easily. It is very easy for us to accept. At the same time, it is very, it has a kind of a value of getting shocked and not in terms of, but kind of getting intellectually also, not 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 shocked, but I think uh, we our intellectual is awakened and we start thinking on these lines, which we were, have forgotten to think about. So one of the questions uh, and one of the points that you have touched on to for role models is, yeah, you want to make a point, sir? Yeah, go ahead, sir. Yes, please, Ashok, if I may. Yes, sir. You use two words. One is uh, a shock. Uh, it is a shock. Anyone who is, uh, reads the Sunday papers, of course, now we have no papers, physical papers, but we, a guru, he provides a space in which there is enlightenment, there is transformation. And in our tradition, I mean, the Indian tradition and culture, one of the ways is administering Shakti path. Read Muktanand if you wish. Paramhans Muktanand, the, the disciple of Nityanand, uh, the one who set up that thing at uh, Vajreshwari. Okay? Uh, Muktanand and me and you Ashok and anybody else who happens to be listening, no difference. We are all human beings. Muktanand, there. Before him, Nityanand, there. Today, I am affirming that I dare. The question remains, do you dare? So it is a shock. But without a shock, think of it as a cattle prod. See, when you have bhedchal, there has to be a cattle prod, taser, something that will shake up a person totally. And until the wiring gets back, which is why I asked, we are frolicking in mind space AMP. Will you continue to frolic in a space of your own? That is my question. So whether it is, we say, Kundalini Jagrat Hude. That is a shock. It goes from the base of the spine, up, dump, hits the cranioccipital and transformation. So there has to be, at some stage in your life, if you are moving from point A to point B, there will be shocks. The first shock is, you know, when the umbilical cord is cut. The second shock, big shock is when one of your parents died. The third shock is everything in between till you get the realization that Jagat Mithya. So shocks are essential. See, all this security, dhakka ne lagna chahiye, my mental balance is disturbed. How can he do that? How can she do that? I ask only one question. What about you? What about you? 
Have you ever been unpopular in your life? Do you have enemies? Winston Churchill's question. Uh, so yes. Good, I'm glad. That means at least you had the guts to stand up for something and state it. Winston Churchill's name is in the books. You know a lot about my bio data. For those of you who didn't, Ashok presented. What is it that they say? The vernacular? No. Your interlocutor today, I saw a For you got to do what you got to do till you get to do what you want to do. And the other word which you used, Ashok, is acceptance. It is, it is, see the beauty of this word. Acceptance cannot come without being non judgmental. And when you accept something without being non judgmental, you give yourself the opportunity to experience it. And life is all about experiencing, not understanding. So to accept without being judgmental, to embrace it, to experience it, you will have a, I beg your pardon, but you will have a pleasant experience or an unpleasant experience. If it's a pleasant experience, follow it up. If it is an unpleasant experience, learn from it, but for, for your own sake, not God's sake, heaven's sake, this sake, daughter's sake, other's sake, spouse's sake. For your own sake, for your own growth, for your own fulfillment, for your own, ultimately for your own sadgati. Put yourself out there to experience. What's the worst that will happen? Death, right? That's going to come and get you somebody. Yes, carry on, please. Absolutely, sir. So, yeah, so we, we also touched about this point earlier of uh, looking into a mirror and finding the role. I have met quite a few people, not only physically, but virtually also. And this is one quality which is very, very rarely seen. Not even discussed. I mean, I know this is one of the important points that you're making. And I find that in majority of people, this, rather they don't even have this kind of question. To look ourselves in mirror. Not only physically, even if you physically look, there is a kind of, I mean, there is a different kind of experience to have. But to really look at yourself, not critically, but just look and see. Will you speak more about that, please, sir? Certainly. To look into a mirror in languaging is to look at a glass, reflecting surface glass mirror. Most think about this. <laughs> think about this. Shuffle through your memory, such as your mind is pleased to serve you. Observe people looking into a mirror in the hostel, at home, uh, in those large mirrors in the malls, in the departure lounge at airports. They will be looking at everything except themselves. They will not be looking at themselves. They will be looking whether the eyebrows are okay. They will be looking whether the mustache is curled, whether they've left a bit of beard behind whether the nose is clean, they'll check both the profiles and the fall of the shirt and whether the pen is perfectly positioned or not and the fall of the trousers and the list goes on. Because by the time they've gone to the dust on the shoes, the hair has again fallen into place. So they look in the mirror to confirm that they will get the validation of other people who are looking. They rarely look themselves in the eye. Because, yes, and this is the truth, they are fearful of what they might find there. And they're smart enough to know that what they will find there will terrify. So, risk averse. Risk averse. Don't do anything which will get you into trouble. Ensure yourself. Ensure your safety net. Have a backup. Have a plan B. Have a plan C. Never stops. So look everywhere. But if you don't see, it has been very well said that the eyes are the mirror of the mind. Eyes are the mirror of the mind. So when you look at yourself in the mirror, what do you see? 
take time out after you finish checking your shave and your hair. And I'm looking right at you. At least there should be. And how the glasses are sitting at the bridge of the nose and whether the cuffs have been shot well. What remains? The person, the human being, the entity that is the NP. This is the body. It is a vehicle. These are adornments. So where where three piece suit to be appropriate, or or uh, you're going to a very cool place where woolens, long johns, you name it. But where am I going with this body? Where am I going with these clothes? Is it for other people or is it for myself? I do agree. See, to dress well, uh, you get a good sense of this. Lots of people like this. There's, there's nothing wrong or right about it. But to be so preoccupied by the dress that you notice all this heavenly glory around you is wasted time and wasted money on the dress as well. That is actually, literally, people do not look at themselves. In the Check it out. Uh, take a look at yourself. See how quickly the eyes flit away from your face to other parts of your physiognomy, anatomy. Metaphorically, when you speak about uh, looking at oneself in the mirror, it is not even so much about a self-analysis because analysis is collation and is very close to judgment. Don't start judging yourself. You are created by God. You are a creature of the universe. You belong over here. Don't judge yourself. Enjoy yourself. The one to judge you is watching everything. At the hour of judgment, all these accounts will be presented to you. Today you enjoy. And if you do not do this today, the time which you have lost is lost forever. For time is unidirectional. They do say that there is the wheel of time and what comes around goes around. Read karma. For you in this one life, when you break free and move, movement is unidirectional. One step forward, two steps back need not be the story of your life. And that brings me to the root of all corruption. The person who refuses, most people, to look at themselves in the mirror, I've told you the reason, they're terrified of what they'll find within, that they will be more ashamed of themselves than they already are. Why are people ostriches? Because they're ashamed of themselves. Why do they crawl into holes? Because they're ashamed of themselves. Beyond that, beyond that, it is not about analysis. It is only about introspection. It is not about self-evaluation. It is only about introspection and truth telling. Because the root of all corruption is telling untruths, lying. Think about this on your own time. Yes, think about it. You have a mind which works when it works. Think about it. So, and when will you lose those inhibitions? When will you shed all that baggage? And when will you break free? And uh, last night, they say, more than 5,000 years ago, Lord Krishna appeared here, was born. And very many years later, there is a, it's not a bhajan, it's a, but it is, uh, uh, Meera Singhi. It is Meera Singhi. Meera Bhai Singhi. Mujhe aai na... No, mohe. Mohe aai na jag se laaj. Mohe aai na jag se laaj. What are you ashamed of about other people? What do you care what they think? You're good. Nobody acknowledges you. I and P acknowledge you. After that, whose acknowledgement do you want? You want? Go. Mohe aai na jag se laaj me itna. Zor se nachi yaad. Te gunguru to. So that is metaphoric. She danced with so much vigor. That the gungurus gave. 
what she the deeper meaning and there no deeper meaning you could also take it to mean since you are still into understanding if you are here to experience you will experience that mirabai has shed her shackles the metaphor for which i have to do and mohe aai na jab se laaj hai na zor se nachi aaj i involved myself entirely immersed myself in what i was doing at that time it was the dance for the lord so what are you doing when you operate when you see patients when you care for people when you give your service to other human beings if you are not doing god do it wholeheartedly don't worry about what people say and the cut of your shirt and it is good you wearing a shirt it's clean shirt. what more do you need ke ghungaru toot ke you are unshackled you are free which is why dante after somebody man is born free but you will find them everywhere in chains my invitation to you ladies and gentlemen on mind space today is we have nothing to lose but your chains the root of all corruption is lies tell the truth please tell the truth do not compromise yourself and do not do things which will make you lie because that craven story about one lie and a million lies to cover it and it's a waste of time energy and application of mind which should be much better app- applied to other things yes ashok yes sir so there is there is an interesting question from dr shushrut kulkarni who talks about this same concept when he is asking uh will not self assessment mean a lot of self judgment a bit of years written but i have translated it into a lot of self judgment so right so i'll 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 attempt to differentiate between the two now uh i advise all my students to try and do what i do because i engage myself in an absolutely brutal self assessment periodically because if i do not assess myself i will not know where i am and unless i do not know where i am i will not know not how far but where i have traveled and i will not have a coordinate from which to travel else i already said so shurut that between self assessment and self judgment there is a very fine line but the aware person need not be confused there is a reason when you assess yourself you do it by introspecting non judgment how to make this easy once you realize out of your experience that you are in competition only with yourself you don't have to compare yourself with any other human being animal god uh, fish if you are in competition you are in competition only with yourself if you are going to be combative learn to be combative by being in competition with yourself so a brutal self assessment is essential self assessment is actual self assessment is by no means judgment it is documentation documentation is not judgment once you take the documentation you collect it you collate it you analyze it you present it that is perhaps a bias perhaps judgmental or perhaps not to come back with my attempt here to differentiate to brutal self assessment is self introspection introspection with gloves off self judgment is not even a term which is why now come alive to this you do not have to judge yourself the great judge wherever she or he is is doing the judging all you need is to be clear about where your 
current coordinates are. Because on this journey, on this trip, if you like, in this movement, the single most important thing always kept under lock and key, known to the captain and the first met somebody on the high seas, uh, uh, when there was only sail, was the chronometer. Because that one instrument was used daily to chart the ship's position. Otherwise, all the ships would be lost at sea. And if that was, that was the beginning of all mutinies. They smashed open the, in which the chronometer was kept. And that was it. The captain, otherwise the captain could say that, look guys, if I die, none of you all know how to use this, you die. So, unless you know where you are by introspection, you will not know whether you, whether you've reached where you started out and whether you need to alter course. Once you have set a load star, you will go up course. Once there will be events. You will get carried away with sorrow. All this happens in life. You will be distracted by happiness. All this happens in life. You will undergo a period of dejection because of something which happens to somebody you care about. All this happens in life. But once you got the load star over, it's only a matter of time till you get back on course. So do not judge yourself. You don't have to judge yourself. Whether I did, whether I did, no. So Shunut, if you do pray, any of you who do pray, I pray. I ask God only for one thing, forgiveness. I don't ask God for things, for treasures, for position, for this, that. No. I ask God for forgiveness. And if I thank him, and I do thank him every day for everything which he has been pleased to give. He is the judge. I work. Again, I send you, it is not a bromide, ladies and gentlemen. Very, the, the Gita teaches us so much. All the holy books teach us. It's not religious. Karam kayeja, phalki echa, mat kare, insan. Jaise karam karega. Yeah. So it is so clear. We memorize all these things, but isko hum apne aap mein utar nahi sakte. Kehte na, we do not make it part of us. Which brings me to, it's not entirely unrelated. Everything is connected to everything else. That is the essence of mind space. And the universal mind. Now, back to the universal mind. If, and it happens all the time, we are not able to dissociate our goal from what is here available, tangible, palpable, available to the senses, that itself is a deflection. That itself, in the time we are deflected, that is wasted time. Now, if one is out to become uh, uh, some advanced kind of sadhak, then you have to go to the Himalayas or uh, to some desert or into a jungle, like the jungle like Valmiki did, and Himalayas like uh, so many of the sages did, uh, wherever they went. For even these little distractions were anathema. Because life is finite, time is finite. Every time we permit ourselves to be swayed, knocked off course, lose our footing also. That, those femtoseconds which are lost in the larger context. So if, if, no, dear, this is going into religion. So, no, no, uh, 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 scratch that last part. But yet, this is true. As you sow, so shall you reap. Karbala ho bala. Why should you judge yourself? You will know. Judgment will be passed on you. The gift will be given to you. Thank God for what he gives you, whatever your concept of God is. And pray for forgiveness. For unknowingly, no matter how aware I am, and I'm very aware, it is possible that I've hurt somebody somewhere beyond my peripheral vision. So I, I, I do not know even who or where or how. So I pray to God for forgiveness. That is what works for me. So do not judge yourself. Assess yourself brutally, brutally, brutally. Because if you are to be the best version of yourself without a regular and brutal self expression I tell you, Sush, it is not possible. Ashok. Yeah, so thanks, sir. Dr. Shushurit is also saying fantastic reply. Uh, we have a comment here from Gautam Shetty, of course. So he comments, thinking too much is dangerous. No life appears rewarding if you think too much about it. 
does gautam want me to comment on that on his comment it is his comment but i'm sure he wants you to comment on it uh, no but uh, see he has the other thing uh, no offense ashok but this is how we take people for granted gautam is a very very dear person for me as he is for you but i absolutely refuse to take gautam for granted again don't take offense ashok or take offense and then you come back to your sanity see for you and me to take gautam for granted he has commented okay and uh, who are you and i to decide that he 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 would be wanting a comment on the comment that is he so dear to us we know him so well so perhaps he wants it or perhaps he doesn't has he asked for a comment you see the point i'm making here ashok is too often too many of us take too many people for granted and the difficult difficult thing here is the people who we most love are the people we take most for granted because we are so we have created such an interdependent bond with them that somehow we feel that we cannot live without them perhaps they feel they cannot live without us and in that whole construct we kill the relationship by taking them for granted kill means we do not end it we do not stop it what we do is we lose the charm and then so that is her job she will do it that is his job he will do it and and it is not that uh, it is not that uh, to be sthita pragna is to aspire for them yes uh, i feel hurt for them <laughs> it's evidence that i am human okay it 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 uh, keeps me grounded sure i feel hurt i do i do so the thing is once i get hurt i acknowledge to myself i look at it from the other person's point of view and then quickly i get over it why because ant has no time to lose yeah i will not comment on gautam's comment for the exact reason i have shared with you yet too much thinking perhaps is dangerous only because that is the thinking possibly taking place in the idle mind for the dynamic mind see i will give you a formula to for the dynamic mind you say i have all that i am powerful to the extent and power what makes me powerful what makes me powerful is i can translate transform shift create in action what my thought process is so i can convert a kinetic into a potential i can convert my thoughts into action and what is the extent of my power power is a function of the law the less time it takes me to convert my this thought into that action for all the world to see that is an indication of how powerful i am and again like sush said about uh, self judgment judging yourself as to how powerful you enjoy the thrill of power the joy of power the feel of power what you can do with that power for the greater good of service nothing beyond that don't judge people will oh he is very powerful he is very good he is the greatest he is the best he is a rock star that's not for you to say let the others say you would be better off occupying your time translating converting shifting moving from thought to action so too much thinking is dangerous because it grounds grounding as opposed to movement that is why too much thinking is dangerous if it is dangerous again gautam it is a statement if it appeals to you for uh, whatever reason it will appeal to you for whatever reason having applied your own reason and logic to something which essentially is meant to be philosophical it will reflect more about you than about anything else because in this you are bringing your mind to what is dangerous and what is not and this is not about gautam this is about everybody 
it tells me where you've been and what you've done that you think that too much thinking is dangerous and i know more than most people how smart gautam is one of my dearest boys and yet gautam has not done this to impress he doesn't need to impress anybody but if gautam can bring up too much thinking can be dangerous what about the ones who are smarter than him i would say there is one intelligent person on his way to becoming a prime intellectual and what will happen to all those very intelligent smart persons they will remain very intelligent and smart and they will perhaps never find their god so what is your purpose don't judge yourself what is your aim the self assess move from it learn from whatever experiences you were less than comfortable with enjoy the experiences that you enjoy practice detachment at the same time do not become a masochist because there are unpleasant experiences back in you and do not become a hedonist because the other back in you because you are losing time and these are all attachments 50 shades of gray is attachment hedonism is attachment these are the shackles of nirabadi the gungrus gungrus make a lovely song mantra mugdha de vyakti yet they are also what keeps you from moving like a tomahawk missile across the i don't know wherever it moves so that's about gautam and ashok no offense there in fact thank you for saying that because yes. because we i was able to share my own thoughts about taking my nearest and dearest for granted absolutely so gautam makes another comment it's a comment not a question so life is a game where the player must appear ridiculous just a comment not a question okay. so let's move on uh, life is a game where the player must appear ridiculous So let's move on to Dr. Charanjit Singh Dilon. He was my senior admirer, and he has a question for you. What advice would you give to your students in forties and fifties? Uh, first of all, Charan, I'm uh, I'm thrilled that people in their forties and fifties still consider themselves my students, and thank you very much. Uh, it it. it draws me close to you charan in a way that uh, ordinarily i would not experience charan having known me for so many years shuffle through your own memory and ask yourself have you ever heard me give advice to anyone let's wait for his input ashok have i ever as an np ever advised right while we are waiting for it to come in uh, all that i do is i provide the space i provide the reflection of my student so i am there going eyeball to eyeball with the student and i provide the space in which the student takes the decisions in which the student becomes more of himself faster stronger higher like in the olympics and is able to identify what is it that one thing inside of him which he would like to bring to the surface and give to the world and give to the world it is not advice this is a process see between the guru and the shishya between the teacher and the taught because i'll not say student between the teacher and the taught because the teacher teaches irrespective my vocation i'm going to be teaching irrespective it's up to you whether you want to learn so the teacher and the taught the learner so so the one single thing is just to show my students what is available just to make it possible for my students to experience what is it that one thing within them which they'd like to draw out and present in a in a 
in the spirit of service to human kind make lots of money drive your bmw audi whatever you like uh, wear wear uh, sweat suits if you like crocodile skin shoes no difficulty but within you your heart is beating with the same rhythm as mine and that is what keeps us together where there are no other lines which attach anybody who has spent time with me is in sync with me in one sense they are always they have always shown and they do show that they are able to do what is appropriate whether it's in a social setting most important most importantly if it is if it is to do with their vision because money is a whole different game we we won't even touch it to so uh, not advice do you want tips on how to make private practice succeed in your 40s 50s or even before ain't you knows them all but to be appropriate with your patients to serve appropriately and to enjoy your achievements as well as your plans is what i make possible so i have no advice to give you charan you are the guy if you want give advice to us knowing you charan you probably won't and if you do you probably will stop very soon after today for let them see through your achievements what is possible for them bear yourself bear your spirit bear your strength bear whatever you have and dare them do you have any of this you want to get where i got start tomorrow is too late start now and charanjit singh dilan is a name to reckon with in chennai it is not it is not so there will be some people who have you as a role model to their child do not undersell yourself one you advice okay i'll give you do not underestimate yourself do not undersell yourself always maintain your sense of self self esteem and maintain your self esteem never count out to anybody never bow down to anybody even within hierarchy structure it is possible there is no karna padta hai it doesn't get in the way of whatever your legitimate wants illegitimate already told you know it's by harming somebody what we say na uh, what is that thing saab hamare pet pe pau rakha no that is not legitimate if if that is the the, the response or reaction which your acts uh, produce then perhaps you are not doing something which is entirely so wherever you are at whatever stage in life do not undersell yourself that can only happen if you respect yourself that can only happen if you have sir, subjected yourself to a brutal self assessment and you know who you are and you know what you are worth and then all this i'm talking becomes noises in the air because now you have found yourself you found yourself once you found yourself all this is all this is shooting the breeze if you are at conference evening words over wine no big deal and no big deal so it is about your humanness you want advice i'll give you advice reconnect with the human in you i'm not saying you don't but on a regular ongoing basis and allow your humanness to manifest your stage in life charan there is nothing else for you to do. i affirm that thank you charan yeah so dr charan sir has replied that you have never advised us directly but through your thoughts and actions you have influenced us so that's absolutely right uh we have with us uh, dr ranjit nikrishan also he has posted a question when should one retire from professional career ranjit always bowling googly no you not changed at all okay 
So, so here it is, Ranjit. People, listen. What is to retire? To retire, I retired on the thirty-first of July last year. I, I, I feel pretty much the same. To retire is a construct. To retire is a social construct. To retire is a construct provided for you to do things that you always wanted to do and only for yourself. So if you've lived a life according to the constructs and you put away something as a nest egg and uh, you've raised your children to the extent it is possible for anybody to raise children. And that's the secret about children. The secret about children is no matter what you do, children turn out the way they turn out. You, you don't have any say in it. What you do, what you don't do, children will always turn out the way they turn out. So you can provide for the best. And in the social construct, for most people, because hierarchy, society, structure, constructs are made to have a sense of general order. So it becomes possible if you live the life according to those guys, the construct now permits you to live the life you want. But retirement, see, if you found your vocation before retirement and you continue your vocation after retirement as a point in time, in truth, you have not retired. If you stop doing a particular job, perhaps you don't get paid, but you get paid a pension. Uh, if you hang up your surgical boots, you stop operating, actually operating. So what is it that you what is it that you want to do? Uh, one of my students, Dr. Swapnil Kerry, I was I was uh, very intent on getting a book for myself called uh, Ruminations, Reminiscences of the Future. It has been out of print forever and ever, and Swapnil was sweet enough to uh, get it purchased for me in the UK and uh, have it brought down here. And see, one day before your 62nd birthday. Uh, you're good enough to do a revision hip arthroplasty. And one day after that, uh, you're not good enough to do anything except uh, brewing tea at home, perhaps. So, again, no advice, Ranjit. In your life, when you have an avocation, a job, a profession, live your life being true to yourself, you will get a sense of what your vocation is. It is possible, depending on how much you dare, that you will be able to indulge. See, to indulge is the correct term for the vocation. Because the sacrifices one makes to be able to live one's vocation, indulge in it, to experience it, to enthuse in it, to give it all away, and to grow while doing that, is an indulgence. So what about sacrifice? Once you recognize this is my vocation, ask yourself what is stopping you? What is the baggage? What are the chains? What are the obligations? What are the inhibitions? Where is the mirabai in you? Ask yourself. Nothing is possible without sadhana, talim, prayer, ibadat. Nothing is possible. What I'm saying is, nothing is possible without training yourself. It is not religion, ladies and gentlemen. It is all about yourself. If that's not selfish enough. I don't know. Good appeal to you. Beyond that, retirement is not a good word. It is not a bad word. There's no good and bad. It is a watershed in life where, based on what you've done, you are given the opportunity which, if you have the guts to dare take it, to now live life finally on your own terms, there will always be what I call fortunate people. But then that is again adjectivizing and, and labeling and judging. But there will be people who make more times in their lives because not only have they identified their vocation early, the Lord has been kind enough to permit them to indulge in it so much. Uh, Earlier stage, earlier means before they finally copy. So, whatever it is, your ultimate enlightenment, Ranjit, ladies and gentlemen, all of you, 
will be on the day you go from here. None of us is getting out of that. And your ultimate enlightenment, your ultimate retirement, your ultimate everything will only be on the day of judgment when you are able to make peace with your God. And I don't care whether you're an agnostic or an atheist. You have to make peace with yourself. God is not going to embrace you if you are not at peace. Remember this, ladies and gentlemen. Look up whatever religious text you want. This is not religion. This is philosophy. God will not embrace you unless you are first at peace with yourself. So, Ranjit, there is no correct age to retire. That, that young chaps know who are getting MIs at 40 and 50. Chara, not you, uh, who are becoming hemiplegics with you know, hypertension, which they don't pay attention to. And they're too busy correcting scoliosis. Ranjit, not you. Uh, but this happens. And there is a physical limitation. I will not say disability. A limitation. And which they permit, they commit suicide. Because they think, my body, my skills, they were all this. I got a hemiplegia, I cannot speak. No. Think of what you have left. That tired old, uh, half empty or half full makes a lot of sense, but not for chucking around at cocktail parties. No. Apne aap mein ye sab utar. See, philosophy is not voting. Philosophy is a process which you use for an ongoing inquiry, sush, for an ongoing inquiry with brutal self assessments into the way your life is going. We are we, the way you set out that I'd like my life to go this way. For whatever reasons you convince yourself. And the philosophy will tell you are you on track? Then look up, check with the load star. If everything is in line, full steam ahead. So there is no age for retirement, there is no advice for heaven's sake, for retirement. I would ever, the only thing that happens in retirement, ordinarily, in reasonably good physical health is, anybody who's doing a job stops getting their pay. Certain situations, they get their pensions. Otherwise, no. So retirement is an economic, social question. My take. Thanks, sir. Um... There are a few more questions and we are also fast running out of time. So we'll take another yeah, question. Yeah. We have another question by, again, this is a question by Dwapa. So, sir, what is wrong with discipline of orthopedic surgery currently and what needs to improve? What is wrong with the discipline of orthopedic surgery currently and what needs to improve? Yes. Yeah. Again, that's a lot like Charan's question and advice. So what is wrong and what is right is again me sitting in judgment. That is not my job. What needs to be done to make it improve, I do not have the executive power which it takes to either improve it or make it deteriorate. Right and wrong are matters of perception. To make something improve, there are always two people in an election. And whether they like it or not, they'll end up taking opposing views. So one man's improvement is another man's deterioration. Ultimately, what happens, happens. So rather, yeah, who, who was this question? Gautam Shetty. Uh, Gautam, yeah. Gautam. Uh, so there is nothing wrong with the discipline of are you the minister of health? Then you ask yourself. Are you the president of the Royal College of Children? Then ask yourself. You, Gautam, I, I appreciate fully the spirit in which you ask the question, but you, Gautam, and so many other extremely accomplished and brilliant people like you, you should be focusing more on what is still wrong with you. Why are you still not the best version of yourself? Why are you not working? 
even that much more on yourself. What can be deceived? What can be done to improve your own lot? It's always something that can be. When you are in a position to alter, see, nothing changes, my dear Gautam. You cannot make anything improve or you cannot actively deteriorate anything. Stalin was there for 30 years. Today we have Putin's uh, Russian Federation. Things, it's like children. Children turn out the way they turn out. Things turn out the way they turn out. Look within, look within, look within. You want a mantra? That's your mantra. How can you still become a better one? How can you, in the longer run, become great? In the still longer run, dabble with true greatness. All these things are, uh, they are intoxicating even to speak about Gautam. So don't worry about the discipline of orthopedics. It will go where it wants to. Ask yourself, where is Gautam Shakti? ANP sits here and ANP does not give advice. ANP interacts. So people can facilitate becoming, reaching their own goals, their own cherished goals, to become more, to become more effective, to become stronger, to become more influential. And the day you are that influential Gautam, you will know what is wrong with the discipline of orthopedics and you will know exactly what is required to improve it. Again, for the purpose of this, Gautam, no offense, this has become a word zone. This has become a shooting the breeze. This has become, I mean, what is all this? Can I reasonably do anything? No. So why are we spending time on this? Fine. I am ANP. I am the great ANP. I am the all-knowing ANP. I am the ANP with second sight who can see into the future. I know where Indian orthopedics is going to be 20 years from now. Yes. Yeah. Can ANP today do anything about it? Categorically, no. Can Gautam Shetty? I'll tell you everything, Gautam. I'll tell you on this open channel. Please, you, in your own self, do not have today what it takes with identifying what is wrong with the discipline of orthopedics, India worldwide, and how to increase the standard. Improvements increase the standard. Everybody knows gold is gold. Pure gold is pure gold. And see, invest time in yourself, Gautam. And invest time in inquiries, in philosophy today. So when you reach that stage, when you have the power, you will be able to use it responsibly uh, uh, for, the, for the elevation of orthopedics to a still higher not even level. Plane to a still higher plane. Yes, Gautam. Thanks, sir. Gautam says superb. We have with us Dr. Noshta Dusen, Dr. Vishal Peshat, you are also. And they appreciate the entire program. Um, I think we have time for one question and then we can wrap up. And maybe you can answer this question in detail. And the question is, what makes life worthwhile? This is perhaps the simplest question of the evening. Perhaps the simplest question I've heard all day today. The answer to this question could be very facetiously put as, ask yourself, Jatak Balak, ask yourself, Jatak Balak, what will make your life worthwhile? It is the same answer which I gave Gautam. Yet, that would be an oversimplification. The same Albert Schweitzer, excuse me. The same Albert Schweitzer I referred to, and all of you have heard of the man. He has said, very famously said, that I do not know what will become of you, but this one thing I do know, that among the all of you, the ones who have found how to serve 
and serve other ones who will be happy. It is inconceivable for me to separate a life well lived and a life bereft of happiness or a life full of happiness. A life bereft of happiness cannot be a life well lived because with happiness comes joy, comes love, comes elation, comes enthusiasm, comes inspiration and power. Ah. So what makes your life work is the facetious answer to the question. Indeed, if in your life to be successful, there is no success. There is happiness. The same, the, the underlying uh, Agnipath, 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 Agnipath remains service. Those of you who have found, who have sought and found, I correct myself, who have sought and found how to serve. So Gautam, see, before you fix orthopedics, first you have to seek. So those who have sought and found how to serve are the ones who will be happy. Now, what is service? It is said, uh, Mondas Karamchand Gandhi served. Mother Teresa served. Uh, 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 certain institutions serve. Uh, people serve. What do they get out of this? Isme mera kya? Unless you are able to divorce yourself from that thought process, you will never be constantly happy. You will never get, take my word on this. I am quoting from the scriptures. You can never be in a sustained state of happiness. You will never be Satchitanat. So when will you be Satchitanat? When you remove all falsehoods, when you remove all corruption, when you remove all overt, covert, sideways, upward, downwards, lies and falsehood in your life. You will find happiness. So beyond happiness. It's very difficult to be happy on an empty stomach. Part of your happiness will be full stomach. In QB7, Leon Uris, is said no, that Polish doctor Adam Kelno is knighted. He comes back and you know, is invited to the Royal College to give a speech on malnutrition because he was in uh, some Borneo or something. And uh, he said, why do, you, why do you live in a working man's clinic on the South Bank? Half the London Poles would have voted on a knighted Polish surgeon. So you know what the man replies? He has his own reason. Very deep, very complex story. But he says, I can eat only two chickens a day. After my two chickens, then what am I going to do? At my clinic, again, Adam Kelly, I can serve the maximum number of needy people. Very complex story. Without getting into it, he has said the truth over here. See, more than two chickens a day. Uh, it's difficult without having an upset stomach, whatever goes with it. And uh, without service, but there is no sense of and service pays. You will never want for food. People will always recognize things. People will always appreciate. Don't wait for their validation. Don't expect them to say it to you. Do not do what you do for that uh, bouquet and that garland. No, no. Those will come to you because those are the ways of the world. You don't need machinations. You take care of yourself, the world for Americanism. Build a better mousetrap and the world will beat a path to your door. So, how will you be happy? Sir, mm -hmm. at your level, look for. What are your avenues to see? Money will come. Name, fame, all those very temporary things will come. And then at the end of it, they'll bury you and burn you and say there's some things about you and that's it. So what can you do here and now today where we have service? And I must give you this uh, quote from uh, Mary Angelou. People will forget what you said. People will forget what you did. 
the people will never forget how you make them feel. So be kind, gentlemen. Be kind, ladies. That is that is the one thing. Uh, uh, kindness begets kindness. Warm begets warmth. Inspiration begets further inspiration. Ashok. Thanks very much, sir. I think that was a great session. We had, we had actually planned this for an hour and we are reaching almost two hours now. And not, not a single dull moment at all. We have been, I mean, personally, I can say, I cannot say about anybody else, like you have said. Um, it has been an enlightening session for me, a lot of insights. And I think insight becomes more strong when they are being reinforced by, uh, by somebody like you. So yes, a lot of my insights, um, I may say validated, but maybe you will differ with it. Uh, but I feel validated. That's, that's, that's a very, very, and I am sure a lot of the audience also feel a lot of validation into what they really feel at their core, but are not only reluctant to ask, but also reluctant to express most of the time. So that, that feeling of validation, that feeling of connect is what makes this mind space the most unique of the programs that we are running. So thank you very much, sir. And there are a lot of unanswered questions and uh, we need answers for those and we'll arrange another episode for mind space very, very soon. Any closing comments? Yes, sir. God so bless any, you all. 